I'm so glad all of you are here to join us uh, for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Today we have Liz Brailsford with us, and Liz serves as the World Affairs Council um, of Dallas, Fort Worth as their CEO. And Liz has a phenomenal story. She's an amazing female leader, and that's what she's here to talk to us about is advancing female leadership. So Liz, before we dive into the conversation, we of course want to remind our viewers and our listeners uh, that Julia Patrick, of course, uh, created this amazing platform. Julia serves as the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy and is enjoying a much deserved time off. So again, hopefully this will come up in female leadership that to give ourselves grace and to give ourselves some time off is equally important to the great work that we do. I'm Jarrett Rance, nonprofit nerd CEO of the Raven Group and honored to serve alongside Julia day in and day out as the co-host of the nonprofit show. And we are honored to have the continuous support, investment, and trust truly within our presenting sponsors. So I'm going to give a verbal shout out for those of you listening on podcast. Thank you so very much to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with the National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, and the Nonprofit Thought Leader. If you haven't checked these companies out, I encourage you to do so. They're amazing, their leadership is amazing, and they're here to pour into you and your mission. Hey, I mentioned uh, our podcast listeners. So we are on podcast platform as well. So you can queue up the nonprofit show wherever you stream your podcast, but you can also find our previous episodes, including one with Liz, because she is back again, her second appearance here, but you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. So Liz, we just celebrated uh, just over 600 episodes and to have you back, thank you, to have you back to talk about this is phenomenal. But I do want to share again, Liz serves as the president and CEO, of the World Affairs Council of Dallas, Fort Worth. Welcome, my friend. Ah, oh, thank you, Jared. Thank you so much. And let me just say, I really appreciate you and Julia. Thank you for hosting me. Congratulations on your 600th show. I did see that on LinkedIn recently, and I think I commented on that. Uh, but yeah. uh, I just, I really appreciate being with you. So thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be back a second time. That's right. That's right. That means that you didn't mess up the first time and we really wanted to hear more from you. <laughs> Stressful. It's stressful. I'm telling Very you. Stressful. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit, Liz, um, about your role, but moreover, World Affairs Council, um, in particular, your Dallas Fort Worth. Like, tell me what this organization does and, and how it shows up in our community. Gosh, okay. So we are really, you said you hit the nail on the head. We're a community organization. We're really part of a grassroots network around the United States. We're one World Affairs Council of 90 in 42 states. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, I actually before uh, was in Washington, D.C. at our National Umbrella Organization, which I can talk a little bit more about later. But I was COO there and heard about this role and so came here a year and a half ago. The World Affairs Council of Dallas-Fort Worth is a nonpartisan nonprofit that is focused solely really on engaging and uh, educating North Texans on all things international affairs. So we don't specialize in a geographical location or an international topic. We, we hit, hit them all. So uh, I saw that you have my website uh, there on the previous slide, and I appreciate that, but it is dfwworld.org. We do a lot. We do a yeah. lot. Check it out. Yeah. yeah, check it out. And and I love that you really, you know, bring up nonpartisan. So you, you touch on all topics and, and all great things, and I, I really appreciate that. So today we're talking about advancing female leadership, and I cannot think of a better person to come on and have this conversation with, Liz. So first of all, let's dive in deep because, you know, you and I, we don't really play in the shallow end. We go deep into the, <laughs> the deep end. It's like, if there's a high dive, we're going to jump it. Um, why is female leadership important? Let's let's go there. Yeah. You know, let me start with this really quickly, because I was thinking before we were going to go on here that. I was going to apologize for looking so tired. I am visiting my mother right now and I had a really hard travel day and I didn't end up getting to my mom's last night until 2.15 a.m. 
And I was thinking, oh, I should just go ahead and apologize for that. And then I said, no, no, I'm not going to apologize. That's ridiculous. And I, I think that's tied into who we are as women and the constructs that we've created in our society. And I think that ties into leadership in general. And so, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is all of me that you're getting right here. And, and I'm, I'm not apologizing for that, but I wanted to mention that, that that was my natural inclination. And I think that women do that a lot. That's important. And I, I can empathize with that as well. And I, I love that you bring that up because, you know, we are doing so much and we also often say, I'm sorry, or provide oh. those apologies. So, yeah. 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 Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Well, as yeah, okay. So I'll I'll mention that later. But you know, I think that that women create stronger uh, organizations. And there's a study done that women in leadership tend to uh, by thirty percent outperform other companies. And I think that it's so important to have representation at the table. Right. So for me, women leaders are are such a, a role model and inspiration for me. And I think that when you leave out half the population, we're 51% of the population. And when you leave that out, you're leaving input behind. And these policies that we're creating in our society, at our businesses and government, uh, at our houses, when you leave out women in, in these decisions, those policies are impacting us. And how can we not have those, those, those opinions and, and input in being uh, in making those. So it's incredibly important to have representation. You hear a lot of people in our world talk about that. And I think that's important across, uh, across the spectrum. But, you know, I think again, uh, I've got notes here. So if you're seeing me look across this, the, the side here, I'm, 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 uh, checking on my notes. So I also think that women leaders tend to be more nurturing. And I think that women who, uh, are, are looking after employees' well-being, and they're more supported, there's less burnout. I think that you retain staff longer. And for me, I know as a leader, employee retention and employee engagement is really the bread and butter of my career. It's the, it's the most important thing to me. I love my staff. I love the employees. I love my teammates. And so all those things are important. And I think that naturally just women tend to nurture yeah. better. Uh, and, you know, inclusivity just in general. Right. Uh, I know that uh, you probably feel a lot of the same ways in these, uh, these, these things that I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I'm, I'm curious about, cause I see this in myself is as a woman, I still am driven by my masculine energy. Mm. So the masculine and the feminine energy, right? And so I actually drive with my masculine energy. So when you mention women are, you know, naturally more nurturing, mm. I have to question myself, am I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I that's it. something to think about. And so for you to share, you know, why female leadership important is important and to share some of those stories and some of those, you know, impact statements is fantastic. Let's get even nerdier because, you know, I, I really like to talk nerdy. Uh, what is some more data behind female leadership? You shared, you know, the 51% of the population. Mm -hmm. You shared, you know, some others. Where else do we find some good, solid stats in our data as it relates to female leadership? Yeah. Before we go there, Jared, let me just add also. So throughout time, we've traditionally had men as leaders. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when we have men as leaders, we are creating the idea of leadership. Lead leadership has been something that we've been building over time. It evolves. It's, yeah. it's not uh, this hard thing, but it's typically through the ages created by man. So when we think of leaders, we are thinking of a male leader and what, what male lead, leaders tend to be and how they behave and how they manage, how they uh, transform business. And so when women started to creep into leadership positions, which is wonderful, and we have a long way to go there and it's going to take time, but when women start to creep into these positions and they deviate from, from behavior that, that uh, male leadership is, it's seen as less leaderly. Is that right. a word? I don't know. We're going to use it. You know what I mean? 
but but yeah, and so let's say this, for example, women tend to use more exclamation points and smiley faces and things like that that may seem more feminine and 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 things that women do. And so when they do that, when they use that in email, let's say, or other communications, it's less it's seen as less of a leader because that's not as typical of a male. And I think that women tend to stuff that down and try to try to not do that. And as I've been pondering leadership throughout my career and female leadership, particularly as I am a woman, mm -hmm. uh, I've really, I've, I've, I want to embrace things like that more because I think we need to move the needle on, on leadership and what it means to be a leader. And so I'm trying to embrace things like that. Now I'm not putting eight exclamation points in my, my grant proposal, but, right. but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's a time and a place. And, and I agree with that. And, and I love that you pointed out, like when we think of leaders, we think of, you know, the avatar, I, I would agree is probably a male, a male leader. And I'm curious because we're going to go into the data, but I'm curious, Liz, from your global perspective, right? Like let's go globally here with, mm. with your perspective. Mm. How are you seeing this female leader in other spaces and cultures, mm. right? Like how is this being perceived in mm. other global communities? Well, I got to tell you, so uh, the U.S., the United States is typically seen as pretty far advanced, pretty far advanced uh, in terms of, of female leadership, but we're really behind in government uh, uh, and other women executives across the board in other countries and even countries that you may not think of uh, necessarily, they've, they've had le women as leaders for some of them for a long time. And so I think across the board around the globe, we have a ways to go, Yeah. Uh, but, but the U S is, is doing all right, but, yeah. but we, we do have a long way to go. Yeah. There, so. There's still some work to be done. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, let's get into, is there additional data you can share with us, Liz, you know, behind that female leadership? But I know we touched on this a little bit, um, but if there's more data behind this, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. Okay. So I mentioned that women are 51% of the population. However, we are far underrepresented uh, in leadership uh, positions across sectors and in the economy and in American society. It's not just business and politics. Uh, I was reading about one study recently, and that study said that there's two biggest challenges that women face uh, that, that keep women from leader, leadership positions. And it's that women are tied to higher standards mm -hmm. and that some businesses don't feel ready to uh, have women in top uh, executive positions. And so that's a big challenge for us. I think it's a mentality. You know, we can do the work. We can go through the motions of interviews and uh, and and hiring and and onboarding and all and, and all these other things that elevate and lift women, but it's the mentality that is so hard to change. Hearts and minds, it's the last thing. It's the last thing that's going to evolve. And as we've seen, there's been zero percent of women as presidents of the United States. Um, in Congress, there's 28 percent of women at large. 24% of the U.S. Senate, 28% of, of the House of Representatives. Uh, if we're talking about the private sector, so um, this is actually a much higher number than I've been reading in years past. And so it keeps creeping up. But right now for Fortune 500 companies, we're at 8.2% of women CEOs. Now that's, that's high. Uh, private business though, let's say 23% of executives uh, are women, 29, uh, women hold 29% of senior management positions, 37% of manager positions. And of course that goes up as the, uh, the, 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 the level of women, uh, goes down it. Another one, a study found that women represent 5% of the top earners considered the, uh, as the 1%, right. Wow. And, uh, we represent 54.3 of the workforce in December of last year, but we wow. only hold 35% hold of leadership, senior leadership positions. And we're not, we're not even talking about equal pay. <laughs> we're not no, even scratching no. that surface. That's a right? whole other can of worms. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no. That's another episode, but these are some statistics that, you know, 
we, I, I believe we need to be aware of. And when we think of our leadership across the nation in particular, I'm curious, Liz, how you can share with us some best practices for us to advocate for female leadership, right? Like if we're seeing this opportunity, how might we advocate for female leadership, be it, you know, in a nonprofit space on the board level, right? The governing fiduciary agents of the organization, as well as that C-suite, uh, middle management, and really just all levels of leadership for an organization. How do we best advocate for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. well, that's, that's, um, that's a lot. Uh, and I think it starts as children, but let me, let me t give you one other stat about nonprofits. So if a budget of nonprofit is a million dollars or less, and let me just say this, cause I am in the nonprofit field and I feel incredibly grateful for being in my position, but, uh, women make up less than 56% of CEOs. But if you go 50 million or more in a budget, we're uh, at just 22%. So uh, it's unfortunate, but, but to get back to your question, I think it can start as children. And I think that is evolving. You know, there's been commercials and advertising and, and we as even we as children and, and Jarrett, you and I come from the same hometown and it's wonderful. I'm sure you were also told you can be anything you want. And I think that, that we are told that, but then reality sets in. And so I think it's more of a reinforcement when we're young and that must continue. But I think when we get to, to uh, let's say young adult and adulthood, those opportunities need to be given um, more uh, fairly, more openly. I think we need to continue to advocate for girls and young women in um, STEM. And uh, there's a lot more boys in those those education uh, avenues, but educational avenues. When we get to women in careers, I think mentorship, and you're talking about advocating, I think mentorship is really important. And so perhaps we institute more mentorship programs for, for women. Uh, I think that you need to speak out. I think that people, and I actually read a study on this a couple of days ago, actually about women advocating for other women. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to speak out more. And I think so many of us, including men may not feel it's as important as it actually is and may not feel comfortable in doing that. But I think anytime that we can speak up and speak out uh, about women advancing or um, uh, opportunities, I, you know, I said a little while ago that women are held to a higher standard. And I, I actually think that's true not always, but often. And so I think that, um, yeah, mentorship, speaking out, uh, giving the opportunity, hiring women. And so there, there's the argument that I've heard in, in, in years past that, well, we would hire more women. We'd have more women in leadership, but that pipeline is not there. There's there, we don't have the options. And you know what? I think it's true to an extent. I think some of it's a little bit of a, okay, I'm on to you, but, <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I mean, I think we need to evolve the pipeline, which means starting when we're children and, and developing that. So your organization, you have a youth program. How, how is that advancing leadership, uh, you know, globally? Can you talk to us about that program? Gosh, well, I love that you said, how are we advancing leadership globally? I would love to take credit for that. <laughs> you are. So for me, I always think like what we do here is impacting the globe, you know, mm. truly that, that ripple effect. And, and so, yes, I, I do see it that, you know, you are impacting globally, but talk to us about the youth program that you offer just mm. a little bit. Cause I think that that shares a little bit of demonstration. Okay. Okay. So one of the four pillars of our work is our education work. And we call it the Global Young Leaders Program. And essentially what we've done is gone, gone on to high school camp campuses across the North Texas area. We're in about 70 private public homeschool charter. And wow, we have set up yeah. junior world affairs councils. It's really exciting. And we are bringing global curriculum and global competency back to our high schools. We're doing teacher uh, curriculum training and things like that. And so we're impacting around 8,000 high school students every academic year, around a thousand teachers we're working with. I love that. And you know, you, you said we're impacting the globe and I made a little bit of a joke about that. And what is that saying about my female leadership? I don't know another conversation, but 
to get back to the case in point, yeah. I do perhaps think that we are are affecting the globe because we are are educating our youth on global competency. And to me, that is bringing the world to North Texas, bringing North Texas to the world. And we are creating a more competitive community and workforce here. And so a lot of the students that we're impacting, obviously we are opening and exposing them to the, to the world at large. And so, yes, they wanna go into international affairs probably at a higher rate than if they not heard about us. And they do work for government, they go into foreign service, they go into corporate and they work all over the world. So yeah, I will take that credit. Not me, the team. The team. Council, yeah. But we'll, we'll take that credit. I love that. The you know, the data behind this female leadership, talking a little bit about, you know, how do we advocate, provide that mentorship takes us so perfectly, Liz, into would you share with the, the amount of time we have here, you know, and I love this photo. It's it's very powerful of you. Um, but what is your female leadership journey? What what does that look like for you? And and I also love that, you know, today as we're as we're providing this opportunity, you are in your home, and that would be your childhood home that actually we grew up, you know, in the same community. So what is your journey looked like for you? Okay. I want to say this point that I started to say in the very beginning, and I probably should have inserted it there, but you were talking about vernacular that, that we use. And yeah. uh, we were in a staff meeting a couple of weeks ago and we were, we go around round Robin to talk about our updates and what's going on and, and thorns and roses in our lives and things like that. And uh, one of the interns, we asked the interns what they're working on. And one of the women, and these are high school and undergraduate uh, for the most part uh, interns. And she said, I've just been da, 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 da. And I, and I, and I had to interrupt her right away and say, no, 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 no. Hold on a minute. You're yeah. not just doing anything. You're, you're contributing to our organization in major ways. And we value the work that you're bringing to us and all your skill sets and, and talents. And so I think women tend to use just, and I have obliterated that from my, my, uh, my communications, because I'm not just checking in with you. Uh, I'm not diminishing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, um, I'm being confident. And, and so, yeah, that's one piece, but let me just say also that I think that all of us are, are all of us, women are leaders every day. Yeah. Um, at our desks, in our homes, in our communities, in our places of worship, in our businesses and in, in our offices. And um, I think it's a really wonderful thing. I think that we don't realize how much of a leader that we're being every day. I think about my mom who raised us as a single mom, my brother and I, and I think of her and I say, wow, she was getting business done <laughs> being a leader. And, it, and it's just, it's, we're all leaders every day. And, and think about that through the lens of a career, be a leader at your desk, take on more initiatives, um, think about your projects, think about learning more about your job. You're being a leader every single day, whether you realize it or not, and, and grow into that, breathe into that, let that imbue you to be the person that you're, you're fully capable of being. And I, I see it in, in the staff and my teammates. And I, I love seeing that, but um, okay. So my leadership journey, uh, I, you know, I've been told my whole life, I'm a natural leader and, and Jared, I think probably the same of you. Yes. Uh, I, uh, yep, yep, yep. And so when, when we were, when we were kids, I, I was always the one who got volunteered to go do the scary task, right. Ask the question, do the, the task or whatever it was. And, uh, I was always voted to be that person in my, my group of friends. My first real brush of leadership was I was captain, captain of my high school soccer team my senior year where you, I, you played soccer too. Yes. I was also you, captain. Yes. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So that was my first brush with it, but uh, you know, I've often thought through the years, what does that mean that we're leaders that we're natural leaders? Uh, what is true leadership is, is leadership innate? Is it taught? Is it a comb combination? I feel that I still continue to ponder that because what is true leadership? But uh, I will say that for my career and I'm, uh, that my career has not been linear. 
And I think a lot of women's careers are not linear for a variety of reasons. And I would agree that mine wasn't. And I, I remember having this stress years ago about thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to be okay in my career? I, I don't know. Am I, am I going to make it where I want to, where I want to be. And, uh, it turns out that I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. But, but I think that a lot of women face that angst and that, that anxiety because they're not linear, but anyway, um, I I've worked hard in my career and I've worked even harder. I've volunteered a lot. I've busted my behind, uh, and I've overcommitted. I've been stressed out. I had chronic stress. But, um, you know, we, we work really hard as women and I, as everybody, but we're talking about women here, but, uh, yeah, I worked really hard to get where I am. I've been in nonprofit public and private sectors now in nonprofit, obviously, uh, really happy where I am, but, uh, yeah, I'd say hard work. A lot that of is a great story. And, and I love that you brought up, you know, your mom's story, your childhood story, you know, really just weaving in that I do believe how we show up day in and day out, yeah. even being tired from a travel day, right? Um, that is so powerful in how we show up as female leaders and what we model, we might always, we might not always wake up and say, okay, I'm going to model female leadership today, mm -hmm. but what you're, you're, you shared in your childhood story for, you know, your brother and yourself to be raised by a single mom, I'm guarantee, you know, she didn't wake up every day and say, okay, I'm going to model female leadership, right? It just was, it, it is what we do. And mm -hmm. I guarantee you, Liz, there are so many individuals out there uh, looking up to all of us, right? Our viewers, our listeners included, so that how we show up day in and day out and truly, I believe as well in an authentic space, you know, oh. share those, as you mentioned, roses, share those thorn moments, like that is a part of leadership. And I, I subscribe to that, you know, authentic leadership as well. Oh. So your journey is very familiar to me um, in, in so many ways. And I'm sure to many of our viewers and listeners, as they listen to you, Liz, you know, as the president and CEO for the World Affairs Council of Dallas, Fort Worth, because it is so important. The stats you shared with us are, are so important. I'm glad to hear that the U.S. is making strides. You know, we're, we're really in a, in a good place. And there's still work to be done. And uh, to mentor and to advocate, I, I couldn't echo your statements further. So thank you for all of this. Oh my gosh, thank you very much. And I just want to say, uh, I, I was actually, just to go back to your authentic authenticity point, I was I had to fill out a leadership questionnaire recently for something that Anyway, uh, and I had to give three ex um, adjectives to describe my leadership and authenticity was one of them. Perfect. I, I really believe that. And, uh, but I, I want to um, thank you for this opportunity again, Jared, really grateful for you. And I just want to say, as we're ending here, that to all of the younger women that are, uh, may listen to this or who are listening to this, keep going, keep persisting. I, I, I was, um, you know, scared at times and, and didn't know where I was headed and thought that I wasn't going to make it and just keep trying, keep persisting. You will get there. You will get there. And, um, I admire you and I am supporting you and I am encouraging you every step of the way, but just keep going and you'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. Absolutely love it. Please check out the World Affairs Council, Dallas, Fort Worth. Liz and her team have amazing programs, projects, offerings uh, that they provide the community. And so, you know, I've learned a lot. In fact, the global citizenry word was something that I learned. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it, but it was, uh, you know, it was, it's part of my life. I just didn't know the term for it. And That's you put that term, you know, to or, or brought it to reality for me. So thank you. Thank you for that so much, Liz. And thank you to Julia Patrick, a CEO of the American nonprofit that allows me to show up day in and day out and have amazing conversations like the one that we just had uh, here with Liz. And again, to our presenting sponsors that allow us to show up for these authentic moments, to have these authentic conversations 
unscripted, I want to share because our, our corporate sponsors or presenting sponsors, rather, they trust us that much. <laughs> so it's fantastic. I want to say thank you so very much to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with the National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, and the Nonprofit Thought Leader. Please check out these companies. I always like to mention that in the beginning, but I hope you really just focused in on today's uh, guest, Liz Brailsford, as you joined us to share about advancing female leadership. So thank you so very much. And to all of you that have joined us, we like to remind you and ourself, and I'm going to remind you, Liz, to please stay well so you can do well. Thanks again, and we'll see you all tomorrow.